Earlier today I had the pleasure of catching up with a group of cadets from the Air Force Academy and they were fortunate enough to sit in on a session with John Penny and Rare Bear. And the class is called the Flight Test Techniques course and what we do is um, uh, we learn a little bit about theory and aircraft and stuff. These guys have been learning about airplanes their whole you know three years prior as aero engineers uh, but in this class we go and we actually fly airplanes and try and take data from it. So one of the field trips is to go out and just get a good feel for uh, different aircraft and how they fly and why they fly the way they do, uh, different flight characteristics as well as performance characteristics and such. Uh, and so this is a great learning lab for us. Uh, we can come here, we can take a look at all the different airplanes and what they've got going on as far as um, uh, different control uh, techniques, different engines, you know, their speeds, and, and right here we get into propeller performance and brake horsepower and you know, propeller efficiency and things. Uh, so it's just a great learning lab for the cadets. Uh, and we also uh, run uh, what they call anti-detonation injection ADI fluid. So we can run the ADI fluid into the induction system, into the blower, and that cools the induction uh, flow into the engine so that we can lean the, the mixture out closer to stoichiometric burn, okay, getting the best energy out of the fuel that you can, and uh, that raises the horsepower up. And then uh, we have our uh, our magic uh, stuff, uh, nitrous oxide, we have a couple of tanks behind the cockpit in the uh, fuselage there. Nitrous oxide, where we, uh, there's a, a little nozzle right inside the inlet in the wing there, you can see this pointing this way. We'll dump that liquid nitrous oxide in there by the, it's very unstable uh, liquid. By the time it gets to the blower, it's separated out into nitrogen and oxygen, okay? Uh, and that just gives us extra nitrogen to burn so we can add more fuel back in again. And the combination of all those things, I've seen uh, this engine is rated at 2,600 horsepower. And in a race a couple years ago where we really needed it, I saw 4,500 horsepower. So when you get a hold of that, you know you got something up here in front of you. Um, so about what pressure are you using? What manifold pressure? The manifold pressure, how you all understand manifold pressure? Piston engine uh, airplanes. Um, the takeoff manifold pressure for this thing is rated at uh, 59 inches of manifold pressure. I've seen about 82 inches. 82 inches. The, the takeoff RPM for the engine is uh, rated at uh, 2,900 for one minute. And uh, when we're good and healthy, which we're trying to step up to that right now, we'll go out and we can, if we have a, a hard race like on Sunday, we'll, uh, we'll get it up to 3,200 RPM. So again, with that reduction ratio, the prop is still only doing about 1,100 RPM. So, and it's a, it's a, uh, a uh, more, uh, the, the larger diameter prop, it's 13 feet 6 inches, versus the uh, stock Bearcat, which is about uh, 12 and a half feet. So, now that being the case, you can't see it now because the uh, prop has turned 45 degrees, the struts are pumped up pretty high. But we really can't get the airplane up into a level attitude like you do with a normal uh, tail drag or like you do in your Piper Cub or your uh, a Rocket Champion or something like that or Cessna 180. Uh, we, we get it rolling down the runway and uh, the stall speed for the airplane is about, uh, <clears throat> when it's heavy, about 90 knots indicated. And, uh, but if we hold it on the ground much above 90 knots, um, we would strike the prop tips. So we have to take off kind of in a three-point, not a three-point attitude, but a very much a tail-low attitude. And it comes off at about 85 knots, which is below the power off stall speed. So this prop that is more than one-third, the diameter is more than one-third the span of the wing, we're getting a lot of lift from the, from the blast from the airstream from the prop. And so if the engine were to just suddenly quit, it would be kind of a no man's land. It would not be a good day. So, but we moved through that fairly quickly. It's just a few seconds over there. And then you'll notice, I don't know if you saw the takeoff today, we had to hold the nose pretty high because it'll overspeed the gear speed and uh, that's pretty sensitive to getting retracted. So I gotta make sure I got gear up and locked before I can lower the nose and accelerate on out to, uh, to for the climb. What's your LOD? Um, about the same as an F4. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good. It's, uh, it's, it's less than 10 to 1. Are you in the soaring program? Yeah, I was uh, CIC of the program back in uh, 69 and 70. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not like a 232. <laughs> yeah, or any of, the, any of the glass birds you guys have out there now. Uh, the wings are clipped three feet. 
And on the stock Bearcat, the ailerons go all the way out to the wingtip, out to the end of the span. Uh, we have three feet, you can see about three feet of uh, aileron available to us now. And people think, oh, gee whiz, you're not going to have any lateral authority. But um, it, it's, it's good and comfortable. Up at race speed, when we're right up around 400 knots indicated airspeed, there's plenty of lateral authority because we uh, use uh, servo tabs on the aileron. You guys are all aero majors, yes, sir. folks? Okay, so how does the servo tab work? Anybody? Servo tab on a flight on a uh, on a flight control surface. Yeah, the servo tabs balance the aerodynamic forces. So uh, when you deflect it, we're actually deflecting the servo tab. It's kind of a combined action. Okay, so my con my aileron forces out there are really not that bad in a race. Okay, we. Um, we have a lot of special systems and things in the, in the behind the cockpit and what we call a hell hole. Uh, behind there we have our nitrous oxide back there. We have our boil off system for the oil. We don't use a regular oil cooler like you have in general aviation aircraft. We take the oil cooler, which is the things about this big around, and we used to spray water on top of that oil cooler and, and exit it out the bottom of the aircraft because the oil cooler by itself with the air coming through cannot handle the heat rejection required uh, of the, with the oil coming out of the engine. Now we've taken that same radiator for the oil cooler and buried it inside a boiler tank, we call it. And uh, it's a sealed unit, that oil cooler is inside there. We flood that with water and the oil coming in there, the hot oil coming in there, boils the water off and it goes through a steam separator and comes out the back end of the airplane, the steam comes out back there. Um, I don't know if you saw I don't think it was hot enough when I was taxiing down to see the little bit of wisps of white coming out of the tail of the aircraft. Uh, but you'll see it later on today, perhaps. Um, but the nice, nice thing about that is it's a, it's a 52-gallon system. And you go through and the we'll, 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 we'll use about four-fifths of that during the race. Um, the nice thing about that is it doesn't require me to monitor the oil temperature uh, too much because with the 50-50 mix of methanol and water, it'll keep that oil. When it's, when it's buried down in, the, uh, in, uh, in that boiler, down around 80 degrees centigrade. The uh, red line for the oil temp is 104 degrees centigrade, and we're, we're still tuning the system. It gets up around about 95 degrees centigrade now, so we're okay with that. Now, uh, aerodynamically, the other things we've done is we've, we've chopped down the canopy. It's, so we sit, I sit quite a bit lower than a guy would in a stock F8 Bearcat. There is a Bearcat down there by the Glacier Girl, the P-38. Did you all see that? Mm -hmm. You can see how tall that canopy is. At the speeds we're racing, you'd actually get some separated flow across the top of the canopy with the slant of that forward uh, windscreen. From the Reno Air Aces, I'm Mark Chalice for Plane and Pilot.